discover the hidden Israelite ancestry of some of the most powerful nations on earth. Watch as scripture unveils the terrifying future of America and Great Britain as revealed through the sabbatical and jubilee years. Discover the identity of Assyria and its role in this final jubilee cycle. Learn of the pending judgments that are to be soon poured out as a result of transgressing the sabbatical years. Sighted Moon. Well, shalom, and thanks for tuning in to Sighted Moon. My name's Mitch, and I'm here with Greg and Joseph, and hopefully Chris will be joining us very shortly. Uh, but uh, for now, we are we are here, the, the three guys, and, and man, Joseph, some pretty uh, interesting things are taking place uh, today, uh, really, I mean, like, as we speak, almost, but, I mean, just s- crazy things, all really, all over the world. We've got we've got the thing in Russia that took place, uh, which is a very interesting thing, I think. Uh, tell us, I mean, w- <laughs> I don't even know how to ask you anymore about this, because it's like these things just keep happening, and it keeps lining up perfectly with what we discuss all the time, so... Uh, I guess it would be like, hey, people wake up and look what's happening in front of us. Uh, what you're saying that the things I'm saying are are correct? Well, I don't want to go that far because I don't want you to, you know, get feel too good about yourself. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know what? Since 2005, when I came to understand the sabbatical and jubilee cycles um, and the curses, it was more the curses that I came to understand. You know, other people figured out the sabbatical and jubilee cycles. I jumped on board with and started telling people about it because nobody knew about it. But it was the curses that confirmed to me where we were in the chrono- um, chronological time clock of Jehovah. So that's what I started to explain to people. And I started quoting, you know, gobs and gobs of uh, Bible scriptures to support my position. Because I didn't want it to be my my opinion. <coughs> I, I think you may have muted your mic there, Joseph. Yeah, I did. Excuse okay. me, I had a coughing fit. That's all right. All right. You you better now? I don't know. We'll see in a second. <laughs> anyway, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to be offering my opinion. Everyone out there was offering their opinions, and. You know, there are a dime a dozen. I got so sick and tired of listening to everyone's opinion about what this means and what where we are and, and and the end of the age and all this stuff. But the sabbatical and jubilee cycles explained it. It explained it in detail and explained it so simply. It was it was you know it was quite amazing for me to understand that. So I started telling people about it, and things started to happen. And it tied into what I was saying. Wow. You know, like the, the curses, the first curse is terror, you know, starting at like it's 26 verse 14. The second curse is severe weather, drought. Third curse is pestilence. And the fourth curse is war. And if, you know, just go to your nightly news right now. Those are the four subjects on the news. Mm-hmm. Terrorism, the war in the Middle East, the attack in Paris, the uh, nations coming together for climate change. And, you know, they may disguise, but it's all the same subject. All these things are worldwide, and they're all because Jehovah has sent them. And some people get, you know, they get mad at you, and they get mad at me because we're fear-mongering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's not what we're doing. We're just reporting to people what Jehovah says. He said, I will destroy you if you don't obey. And everyone's going around and they're saying, well, God is love and God is love and God is love. And, you know, we don't have to do anything. We just got to love each other. And right now we got to be loving and bringing all these Syrian refugees into Canada and into the United States and to help ease the pressure in Europe. That's not love. That's stupidity. I'm allowed, <laughs> am I allowed to say that? <laughs> you, you, you are, I believe. Yes. It, well, it's true, though. That's the that's the thing. It's 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 true. It's it's people are ushering in their own 
end basically <laughs> it's their own what, demise yep they're they're wanting to bring in literally they're, they're it's like it's like he's bringing a curse and the people are almost mocking him in a sense by laughing and and saying yes we want to bring these people in because we love them you know it's like yeah what crazy what deception evangelistic opportunity yeah it just if crazy they were deception. bringing in syrian christians i wouldn't say nothing yeah but they're bringing in syrian muslims and today, you know, the, the Canadian news today is all talking about that we got 10,000 coming in the next month. Our, our, we got a new prime minister last month. Now he's in a big hurry to get these Syrians over here as fast as he can to pro, uh, to keep his election promise to bring in 25,000 Syrians here by de- the end of December. Well, he can only do 10,000, but they're being rushed through. Now, he's not going to bring single men. So that just came out today. They're not going to bring single men. But they're going to bring single men that belong to the LGBT group. Wow. Well, how many single men are LGBT in <laughs> the Middle East? Yeah, not a they're whole They're pretty lot. much all dead. Yeah. So they have to be uh, families um, or women in distress or, or things like that. But so... Anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. The thing, the the big news here today is the the Turkey shot down the Russian war jet. Mm-hmm. That was at nine a.m. Oh, I just realized something. That was at nine nine a.m. this morning, Tuesday morning, their time. We're going to talk about something else here, but just Greg, just so you know that Bill in the Philippines was going through at 9.30 a.m. this morning. Right. That, but that's Filipino time. And that's allegedly on that, that plane being shot down, according yeah. to the news. Yeah, not allegedly. I've seen it in the yeah. video. It, yeah, it was, I, I've seen the alleged video as well. They also, um, so the, 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 Turk, or the Russians are bombing hmm. everyone that's fighting against Assad. And that's pretty much everybody. And he's particularly attacking the Turkish rebels inside Syria and getting them, doing a lot of damage to them. But they're being supported by Turkey. So there's this little conflict going on there. Turkey's telling them to stop shooting at these Turkish rebels. And he continues to bomb them. Now this fighter jet gets shot down over Turkey after being told 10 times you're in Turkish airspace. And Vladimir Putin's saying tonight in the news that it's like someone just stuck a knife in his back. Mm -hmm. You know there's going to be uh, repercussions from this. Russia, years ago, Russia shot down a, um, I believe it was a Korean airliner that flew over top of Russian airspace. Mm -hmm. Now, when Greg and I went to the Philippines, I mentioned that to him. <laughs> we're right over top of Russia here. We could just be the shot wrong down. time. <laughs> yeah. So it's um this is kind of serious because this is a game changer. See, the thing that's going on in Syria, you know, we've said this before, I want to say it again. Russia and Iran have come alongside President Assad of Syria, and they're supporting him. And they are attacking all the rebels that are fighting against Assad. But they're not fighting against ISIS. They're not bombing ISIS. Because ISIS is fighting against those same rebels. So they're letting ISIS go. Now in the northwest, um, northwest of Syria, there are all these various groups up there. And these groups are supported by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Okay. And, and these are the rebels that are fighting up there. And there's some Turkish rebels up there as well. Those are the ones the Russians have been bombing. In the northeast are the Kurdish fighters. And they're supported by the U.S. And the U.S. also supports some of these other various groups in the northwest. So you have, and then you have ISIS. Right? So you got these four different groups here. And Since Russia stepped into the game, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? And started giving all these heavy-duty, sophisticated armaments to the uh, Assad loyal army. Mm -hmm. 
Saudi Arabia has been pouring money and armaments and anti-tank missiles into their troops. And the United States has been pouring armaments into its rebel forces. Mm. So this thing is escalating. But And now we got the French and they're bombing ISIS in retaliation. And they're trying to work with... Uh, with the Russians, they they got they got the two uh, um, aircraft carriers out there near each other, working together, so that they don't interfere with each other. And then the French president was over with the uh, president of the United States today, and President Obama didn't give him any more help, just gave him more uh, intelligence. So it's almost like a waste of trip for the French. So what's the importance of all this? Something's brewing here. Yeah. <clears throat> Where are we? Where are we on God's time clock? What's going on? You can only understand Jehovah's time when you understand the sabbatical and jubilee cycles. And, yeah. you know, Mitch, you guys, you guys now understand that. So instead of me talking... Why don't you explain to people where we are and how you know where we are? I want to hear what you said, how you said, and you know, I may add a little bit. How do you know where we are on Jehovah's time, chronological time clock right now? Well, uh, there's there's a few different things there. I mean, you know, just the simplest form is going back to Second Kings, uh, you know, and and looking up the verse, you know, that gives us the sign. You know, everybody wants a sign, and it tells us a sign, and so then we count. Um, you know, we count by sevens from there, and we end up, you know, seeing all of the sabbatical years, um, you know, from that point. And so we can, we can, by knowing the sabbatical and jubilee cycles, we can, you know, then apply the curses uh, in Leviticus 26. We can then apply those with accuracy and use history to prove it, uh, which is just crazy to me. Uh, but basically, that's, I mean, that's a simple answer of, of how to do it. You know, it's, it's, it's so... When I when I first heard about you, Joseph, when I first heard, you know, about you, I did nothing. Uh, I had no clue. I was, sabbatical year was in Torah, yes, but it wasn't on my radar. I didn't know anything about it, uh, and so it, it just didn't it didn't click. But then the second and third times that I heard about you, I started to look into what you were saying, and and as I started to test it, and as I started to to read up on it, um, it just made so much sense. You know, I mean the. The and, and the thing that got me number one thing that got me um, was can, was let me, this hold your thought. Can I just interrupt you? I yeah. want to just capital on what you just said. You just said that you tested what I said and you proved it. You did your own homework and did it. Yeah. When people when I tell tell people to do that all the time, 